Puxa Deus. This is an army, amen. Um, all right, just um, real quick, I just want to just, just uh, um, um, again, um, just lay a foundation just to, through the word. And then we've got a couple of testimonies. And, um, and then, um, Ron, Pastor Ron, are you going to say something? Are you scared? You're scared, aren't you? Are you scared? Are you scared? All right. All right. No, that, I told me, man, he's a leader, man. He is definitely a leader. Ridiculous. Um, okay, praise God. Um, let's just go real quickly to Matthew chapter 28, just to Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 1. Starting in verse 1. Just, just to make a point here. Again, we might not be, you know, the office of an evangelist, capital E, but every one of us are definitely little E's. Amen? And um, in Matthew chapter 28, watch this, starting in verse 1. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look, look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became, be, became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. And then watch this, verse 7. Then go quickly and tell. Um, that's where we're at today. This is the season. This is the hour. This is the moment. Go quickly and tell. Go quickly and tell. Go quickly and tell. Go quickly and tell his disciples. Tell what? The good news. He's not. He's alive. There's an answer. There's hope. Go quickly and tell. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So watch this. Verse 8. So the women hurried away from the two. Okay, so watch this. So the two Marys, now you understand the two Marys, you know, um, um, were not uh, pastors. They were not capital evangelists. They were not prophets. They were not, they were just two Marys. They were just two. So in reality, the first evangelists were the two Marys. And all the women are like, yeah. <laughs> Amen. So go quickly. And there is an urgency. Um, because right now, um, there's many that do not um, know the Lord. And, and the enemy is working overtime to, 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 to steal, kill, and destroy and there's something happening right now and it's ha and, and all, with the church and in this place, amen. And God's great favor is upon us and he is raising up an army, amen. And as long and he's looking for just anybody that's available, um, he'll use. If you make yourself available, God will use you, amen. And um, again, so the two Marys, and, and I just want to um, 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 say this, and, um, and then we'll, we'll move on. Um, um, so the two Marys, which lets us know that we all qualify to share the gospel. It might not be behind a pulpit in the church, but like I said, we all have a pulpit. So when we go to First Friday or any, we got the barbecue coming out also. So as I'm talking about First Friday, we're also talking about the barbecue because it's got the, it, 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 it's, it's the same thing as far as what we're going to address. Because a lot of people are going to be visiting. They're going to be out there. That's the harvest. And um, so... Uh, I want to encourage everybody that we all have something to say. Even if you've been born again, you just got saved, you just started coming to church, and it's only been three days. I'm going to tell you, you have something to say, and I'm going to show you uh, um, through the word of God um, real quickly. Uh, um, but what happens is um, the enemy will come, 
and, and say, I don't qualify. I don't qualify. You, know, you don't qualify. Look at my past. Look at, what, look at your past. Look at what you've done. You, you just started coming to church, and um, you know, um, God's not going to use you. And um, who do you think you are? And, and you know, people are, you know, no, 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 no. Uh, um, um, I don't qualify. But uh, the point here is this, that God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Look at something. You do qualify. You do qualify. So let's, let's make sure we're on the same page. We do qual- you do qualify. If you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, uh, um, no spectators, no, 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 no one sitting on the sidelines, um, immediately um, you qualify. And it's the power of God working through us. It's not us. It's him. But we just have to make ourselves available And if we make ourselves available, then God will flex his muscle um, through us to impact lives. Because we can't heal, we can't deliver, we can't restore. He changes hearts, he restores, he heals, he delivers, amen. But he uses vessels to do so, you and me, amen. Uh, 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 So uh, one of the the, the beginning, um, the start is making ourselves available. Waking up in the morning saying, I'm available. I don't, your plan, your way, yeah, your will, you created me this day, whatever you want to do, put the people, prayer, also, we, you qualify, and also an expectation, so when that day starts, or the upcoming event that you know you're going to, faith, because it's impossible to please him without faith, right, yeah, but he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, so then we got to be ready for battle when we go, eh, so, so, be, so be prayed up with the spirit of expectancy, something like this, Lord, fill me, and when I open up my mouth, when the time comes that you will put the people in front of me or direct me to that person or people or family, and when I open up my mouth, that you will give me the wisdom and the discernment to, to speak what you want me to speak, um, how long or how short, no more, no less, nothing of mine, but all of you. And, and, and so, and, and have an expectation when you arrive, um, um, thanking the Lord for the opportunities that he's going to give you and use you. I'm telling you, if you have a, a, an expectation and a heart of thanksgiving and, and, and you're available, God will put people, God will give you the opportunity, he will direct you and guide you, and God will use you, amen? So, so here I am, I'm, 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 I'm available. Well, obviously you're available, amen? Anybody available for the Lord? And then a spirit of expectancy, another, the anticipation of benefits to come. Lord, I anticipate when I show up at First Friday, I anticipate on Saturday night at the barbecue that you're going to put uh, people in front of me, that you're going to direct me um, as new people show up, and you're going to guide me. And when I open up my mouth, that you are going to um, confirm it with signs and wonders, that you're going to touch hearts, and your name will be glorified. I expect it, I believe it, and I thank you beforehand for what you're going to do. Now, that's explosive. Give me the boldness, give me the power, and the right spirit. Because love covers a multitude of sins. And give me the right spirit. And give me the right spirit. So God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Um, we have to have a spirit of expectancy. Um, prayed up and thanking the Lord beforehand for what's about to happen. And anticipation. So when we arrive, we're fired up. We're ready. Uh, there's a jump to our steps. Amen. Store it up. You got the victory when you leave the house. We're not looking for it. We have the victory. So we're giving victory to others through Christ. Amen. And and you really think about the people God used. Peter was a fisherman. Matthew was a tax collector. And Moses was a shepherd. And they all had issues. Just if I I qualify. Yeah, and, and here it is. So, 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 uh, making ourselves available. Um, and God, not my will, but your will to be. Just being willing, being available, uh, uh, um, and and a spirit of expectancy. And also, let me just throw this in there. Um, um, thank you, man. It's like the fourth one today. 
um, which kind of goes along with some things I just said earlier. I can't do it. I can't do it. Lord, I can't do it. You know, sometimes we're like, I can't do it. I can't do it. You're right. You can't do it. You and I can't do anything. The Bible says apart from him, we can do nothing. But with him, we can do all things. So sometimes, we have, you know, the enemy will say, well, you can't do it. Yeah, praise God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that's where I'm available. I have a spirit of expectancy. I'm ready to go. I have the understanding that um, 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 I'm a vessel for him, and, and I can't do it. It's not going to be my wisdom. It's not going to be my power. Um, um, if it wasn't for his grace, I wouldn't even be where I'm at today, and I can't do it. But, Lord, I know you can do it through me, and, 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 and I thank you for what you're going to do. Amen? Um, so we can't do it, but he can. That's where John the Baptist said, I must decrease and he must increase. We need to get out of the way. We need to get out of the way. And when people finish talking to us or having an encounter with us, that they walk away not talking about us, but the experience they had with the Jesus we just shared. Now, real quickly, and then we'll get some testimonies. Okay, now we'll just, I, I just share a couple things. And um, John, real quick, I just want to show you something. John, just, just for foundation. John chapter... Um, what was it, 14? No. Where's my, I mean, where's the, no, no, where's the, John, John, chapter 4. John chapter 4, here's a Samaritan woman, okay, verse 7, verse 7, watch this. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. And, you know, this is something. So, woman, how can you ask me for a drink? Um, for the Jews do not associate, the Jews do not associate with the Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him. And he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from, its, from, from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and his herds? Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst again. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw the water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Now, and of course, um, Jesus impacts her life. And watch what happens a little later, okay? Uh, uh, real quick, um, go down to um, 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 verse 39. Verse 39. So she has an encounter with Jesus. Um, her life is turned around. And in verse 39, watch what happens. Many of the Samaritans, she, she, she goes back in town. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two more days. And because of the, his words, many more, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer just believe because of what you said, now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. She was a mess. She had issues. Has an encounter with Jesus. Hasn't, didn't, didn't go to Bible college here at this moment. Has not been in the church for one month. I'm trying to say something. She just got saved. And the Bible says that she goes back to town and did I read that right? Many of the Samaritans from the town, many, not a few, many 
Sounds like a move of God. I said it sounds like a move of God. And God used somebody that just got saved, did not know 20 scriptures, did not know maybe even five, I don't know, but I can guarantee you did not have memorized 100 scriptures, and, 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 but she had a testimony. And she went back to her world first Friday, barbecue, went back to the world that God had placed her in, and she shared her testimony. And we all have a testimony. So you can be recently saved. What do I say when the opportunity presents itself? You can just share when the right timing presents itself what God did three days ago. When I used to work at the airport when I first got saved, I didn't know much. I was learning everything little by little. But we used to get together at the, at the house, and there was so, God would move in such a powerful way. And I was so excited. I'd go back to work. And Monday through Friday, that's, I'd just be sharing, man, you won't believe. I mean, I know this might sound a little crazy, but I'm telling you, this happened and that happened. And, and man, we got another event coming up. You should come. And I, what I, my, the tool I used, the testimony and what God was doing. For his glory. So I'm trying to encourage everybody here that we all have a testimony. And we are all um, part of this. And God has called all of us to impact people's lives. And when we trust him and make ourselves available, he will present opportunities for us to impact lives. Amen? So... <laughs> Um, the opportunities that we have right now are first Friday. We have an opportunity right now with a barbecue and the outdoor service. These are opportunities that God has given us. So now we have an opportunity to impact lives. Amen. And now that we've established that all of us are little E's, amen, and that we all qualify and that it's all hands on deck because we're not just trying to impact a few. We're trying to impact city, a city, a city, and cities for the glory of God. I said a city and cities. This guy, Ronnie's, come here, Ronnie, real quick, real quick. This is ridiculous. Pastor Ronnie. I want to encourage us to, uh, to let you know, sit a city. We went, tell them what we did yesterday and, and who's going to be at the, at the upcoming services. Like all these, okay? I'm talking about a city now. Uh, we were uh, cleaning up at, um, over here on uh, Buckeye and. Look at the people. Look at the people. We're on Buckeye and 13th Avenue and, and the city of Phoenix uh, Police Department was there. And uh, um, they were just so impressed. And um, so they're going to show up here for the, uh, for the barbecue. Yeah. For the barbecue and, um, and Saturday night service. Uh, so we have a lieutenant coming out here. Uh, yeah. And uh, the guy who's in charge of uh, the first Friday area. So we got a couple of police officers coming out. And uh, a city of worker uh, um, guy. How did, employee who's going to be here. Um, so they were really impressed, and uh, uh, hopefully so soon, very soon, uh, we're going to have uh, another cleanup in this area. Yeah, he said, uh, if, if, oh, uh, Officer um, Ansich, that's his, uh, that's his last name. He said, uh, if you guys need anything, like if there's any problems at, uh, in your services, you know, we're in the hood. So he said, if there's any, anybody giving you a problem, uh, yeah, he said, just call me and I'll come on and take care of it. No, no. You understand what I'm saying? That's why it's all hands on deck. The time is now that God is doing this thing. Amen. God is opening up doors. Favor is invading the church today, amen, and God wants to use all of us for his glory, amen. The enemy would say, no, 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 not you. God says, yes, you, 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 for the glory of God, amen. Amen. Well, you know, uh, uh, real quick, um, okay, just right there, give him a hand. 
It's awesome. It is awesome. And, and God's working. And we got the Phoenix Rescue Mission lines here and, um, 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 to help um, to help people, um, 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 the placement and jobs and stuff like that. And this is something that looks like it's going to maybe go every Tuesday, right? Every Tuesday. Medical mobile truck or medical m m mobile with doctors during the, here at the church while this is happening to meet needs. We're not, try we're not just impacting a neighbor. God is opening up the doors so we can impact the city and then cities. That's why it's important, just like yesterday, everyone showed up. And like he said, it was a strong turnout that everybody showed up for the cleanup on the other, on the other side of town. And um, like you said, man, that was like the biggest group we had was from the church. And it doesn't, I mean, I'm not minimizing because everyone that showed up from other places, God bless them. But that shows like, okay, we're in this thing. Everyone's committed. We can't slow down. We got to understand who we are in Christ and what the cause is and what this is all about. And obviously by this turnout, <laughs> I guess you guys know what it's all about. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, Craig, Craig was a byproduct of... Of, of first Friday over here Craig you lift your hand his son is with him because during that time he didn't have his son so Craig um, um, first Friday um, and, and who was it that in yeah beside Eddie but who was it that invite or, or talk to you Cosmino where's she at right there stand up so you talked to him or you invited how did it how did it work how, did you talk to him over there first Friday Okay, so he showed up at First Friday, and then he was impacted, and now we can't get rid of him. <laughs> and all you did was just ask him to come to an event. You, did you tell him, like, man, you're going to hell if you don't get Jesus? What, what did you say? Hold on. What did you say? Okay, wait, wait, because this, this is part of the evangelism. Listen to what she said. I, I'm, this is part of the class right now. What did you say? I just told him it was the most awesome thing ever. Like, there, you're never going to experience anything like that. You don't see other churches going out there yeah, doing this stuff. No, I told, I told him it was going to be cool. There's going to be rappers. You, there. Oh, you said there's going to be rappers and it's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah. And dancing in the streets. Dancing in the streets. He's like, he's like I got to come see this. I got to check this out. No, no, watch this. And then he's, he's here and he's got his son. And the physical precedes the spiritual. When Jesus, watch this, when Jesus spoke to Peter, he didn't get, speak to him over his head. He, he met him where he was at. He started with the physical to get him to the spiritual. The physical was, I'm going to make you a fisher. What was Peter? Amen. So sometimes we come at people and the, the walls go up because it's like, whoa, slow down. She's like, it's cool. Check it out. Dancing and this and that. Keep it real. And we're talking about inviting someone to church maybe or it's like, man, you got to check this out. If you, I, I'm just using this for an example. I know it's not first Friday. Church, you don't have to sit there and go, oh, my God, you, you need to get sick. Man, man, you got to come on Sunday. I'm telling you, this place is different. They, there's breakfast. They have pancakes for free. They, 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 I mean, it's ridiculous. If nothing else, but I promise you, you're going to like it. But if nothing else, you get a free breakfast with no catches and no gimmicks. That's evangelism. I'll even pick you up. Use and communicate. Keep it real. And recognize the tools that God has given us. The platform breakfast ministry first friday they're dancing on the street we got rap they're giving away food you can even take pictures and they give it to you for free what that's evangelism and of course when god gives an opportunity because of the, the situation you can share certain things as the spirit leads but we try to, I think the enemy, you know, messes with us and we overthink the thing. Because we can all say, hey, you got to check out this cool place. Now, we're going to talk about what we do while we're there. But outside, as far as inviting people to church, the barbecue, church services, 
you know, and you invite them, and then you have a car. You can say, hey, here, it's for the church here. I just want to invite you. This is where it's at. You know, if you make it, just come find me. I got the hookup. I know people. <laughs> no, but do you, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Have fun doing it. Keep it real. Yeah. You know, you come, find me, and I'll find me, and I got connections. Have fun. I'll get you hooked up. I'll take care of the seats for you, you know. You're connecting with them. I remember, it, I'm going to say one more thing, and I'm going to have Chris. Is Eddie here too? Hey, where's he at? Okay. Chris, why don't you come up here real quick so, so you can share. Um, so, 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 so um, I remember at work, when I used to be on a gate, you know, you have a crew that you work with, right? And you're there for the, the whole, you know, the, 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 the rest of the shift. So when you're loading bags in the belly of the plane, you usually have somebody else in there with you, helping you. So you're in there for... <laughs> Sometimes 30, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, depending on the flight. And sometimes until the turnaround when the flight comes in, you unload it, and then you have a, minute, a little bit of a break. And if it's not too long of a break and it's a, a little bit of a break, usually you just sit there and kind of just, you know, relax in the belly of the plane until the bags show up. So sometimes you, you got some quality time. Well, praise the Lord. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> but I would recognize the people I was working with, and some of them, of course, were sports fans. So when I got saved, I didn't come at them immediately. First of all, my life was starting to change, and they were recognizing it. Sometimes they would ask questions to me, so that's an open door, obviously. But I would recognize what they like and um, what, what, you know, the things they, so a lot of them, like, is sports. So we'd start talking about sports. I would ask them, so what did, you know, you know, depending on the team, hey, what did the Broncos do or something, you know, last week if it was football season? Or I'll make fun of them. It's like, man, your team, man, is, I mean, are they going to win a game this year? <laughs> no, no, but you understand? It's keeping it real. Fish, Peter, fisherman, amen? And you start talking to them. And, it, it, again, you, you start the conversation. And as you start, you start in the physical. Because, remember, the first Adam was the, it was, um, the natural. Uh, the second Adam, Jesus, the spiritual. The physical precedes the spiritual. Do you see that? So, so, so. We do the possible, God does the impossible, and then all of a sudden within the talk, because I was looking for an opportunity, because I was prayed up, and I said, Lord, whoever you put on that gate, give me the words so I can impact them. And then all of a sudden, something is said, or they might turn around in the discussion and say, so by the way, I heard you're going to church. <laughs> or I would say something about an illustrated sermon that was coming up. So we started with sports, and I go, hey, by the way, man. I went to church. This place is pretty cool. There's Phoenix, Phoenix First Assembly. They're putting on this thing. It's, 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 it's radical. It's, it's cool. It's, it's illustrated. And, you know, if it was a Christmas tree or they had a wrestling ring in there one time, oh, I went crazy with that. I was inviting everybody to that. Dude, there's going to be wrestling in the church. <laughs> you got to come. And many of the people from work did show up to services. And there's people coming today in this service from back then. Yeah. Amen. So, so I'm just kind of giving us some ideas. Um, 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 Eddie, why don't you share your testimony of what happened at first Friday? Everyone say, hi, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. <laughs> oh, man. That was, that's a good, thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Hi, family. Um, you know what? I told myself, first and foremost, I was waiting when I got to this church. I was like, you know what? I want to wait for the right time to call this home, and this is my main covering. This is my domata. This is, I love you guys. Um, these guys have shown me nothing but love, so I thank you, Pastor Gus, for everything. Um, yeah, first Friday. Oh, man. Um, at the time, I'll just be real quick. At the time, I was at Salvation Army, um, and I'll just run through it really quick. The, the day, I was just, it was just one of them spiritual warfare days, one of them, them uh, I was just going through it, like we all go through it, you know? And uh, actually, I'm going, I was going through it because I didn't hit my knees first thing in the morning, and I catch that right away, first and foremost. Um, so it's, my buddies are like, hey, you want to go to First Friday? And these are three guys from there that I never, 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 never hang out with because I was, like, too cool to hang out with, you know? And uh, I'm like, uh, yeah, what is that? And I'm like, no, nah, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go to my room and just get in my little pity party or whatever. And then, so... Um, no, man, I just, they come knocking on the door, and I'm like, man, what these dudes want, man? So, right, let's go. Let's do this. So we go, man, and then 
Of course, you know, I, I share this with Pastor Gus. I'm walking down. I get all these hippies trying to get me to sign for free marijuana and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, this ain't it, but the band's cool. And then I got a four-hour window, mind you, because the Salvation Army, you got their militant, you know. So it's cool. So we're walking down. And see, I've been to, to school. I've been discipled. I've been things of that nature. Um, Pastor knows my bishop. He knows where I've... So I know music, and I know hip-hop, Lecrae, Tripley's my dude. Um, one of my buddies is a, a hip-hop artist, Michael Carroll. But uh, anyways, so I hear Lecrae, and my, my dudes are like, my guys are like, walk in, and they're over here checking out the perfume. I don't know what they're looking at. And I said, what is that? And I, I look over to the left, and like, oh, it's that church. It's that, that right. church. And I'm like, what's what church? And I fire and water, you never heard of it? And I'm like. And it's crazy because the churches that I've been around with, like, he's connected with them. Uh, I taught at the Dream Center. I lived at the, you know, worked at the Dream Center, church on the street. I, and I'm like, how did I not hear a fire and water? This is crazy. So I start going to the music. I start going to the voice. I start going to the voice. And that's been this whole step, this whole season that I'm in right now is about running to the voice. And me, especially me. This man can uh, agree with me. I just got to, like, keep my mouth shut, you know. Just be quiet. Calm down, you know. Just So I, I run into Tony and them and, and, and Jolene, and they're on the computer, and I'm like, and then I'm like, what's going on here? And then I, I go, hey, can I put a song in? And I, one of my favorite songs by Trip Lee is called Manolo. And uh, they're like, yeah, just real nice, you know, real nice, you know. And I was just like, wow, this is cool. You know, praise God. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real nice, you know. So, no, so, I mean, man, it was just a fit. So, me, I don't make a move without praying. I know better. I don't, I just, it's just not what I choose to do. And sometimes he'll tell me, he'll give me the answer, and I'll still want to do what I want to do. It's, it is what it is. But then I learned my lesson real quick. But anyways, yeah, so I, I, I'm like, wow, praise God, you know, and I'm watching him dance, and I'm just like, man, this spirit, this, this, this people on fire. Like, what's going on, you know? So then I just started, like, praying and asking God, like, what's going, you know? And then all of a sudden, if you guys ever see me, I, I, I have a certain way I get into my worship, and I just, I'm kind of quiet. I like to sit, like, I keep a closet with me all the time, you know? Yeah. Well, anyways, um, I'm standing there, and here comes this Mandy over here. She's like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, what's up? She goes, so we probably said about three words, and then it was, like, instantly, um, Spiritual warfare, Ephesians 6, 6 to 10. And we're talking about the armor of God and putting our helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, spirit of the sword, belt of truth, shoes of the shot. And she's right there with me. And I'm like, okay, I'll be back. I'm like, what's really going on? You know, at this church, is this, I like this place. So I went back, and then I talked to my, my buddy Chris, which he'll be coming here. He can't. Well, I was just with him yesterday, and he's like, man, he had to go back because he's got the time limit. And he's like, I said, Chris, we need to get over there. He's like, well, were you? And I said, man, we need to get to this fire and water. So the next Saturday, I think, I, long story short, I've been trying to get back over here and get back over here through my will. And then finally I started asking God. I was like, God, you know, I, I, there's something there. There's something there. There's something where i got to be there. And God has always placed me in places of good, strong uh, learning places, discipleships, whatever it may be. But this time, it's more like, it's like I've given you knowledge. I've given you certain things. I've given you, I've taught you. There's not really much more. You have to start doing things on your own now. And when my pastor, Pastor Walt, told me that, he goes, you're, you're naturally born like that. You're a fight. You, you have to go out and fight and fight and fight. And I'm like, I, you know, I can't do this. I, you know, I, I've cried out and everything. So I came out with the wrong attitude. Of like, okay, I'm going to figure everything out on my own. And I just get constantly broken down and broken down. And then it wasn't until I finally made it to Fire and Water. I, had, I probably showed up because uh, he's seen me. I run around here a lot. And I've been to this door. I don't even know the times of the church or the service or whatever it was. But I'm at the door like, when's this place going to open? And it's like basically God's put it in my heart. Like, how bad do you want it? I'm not going to give it to you. You're going to have to get it this time. Because I've given it to you, and you just keep playing with it. So how bad do you want this? So right now, like, 
that I've, you know, as soon as I start getting in here and everything, it's just this agape, this agape love. Like, people, like, I could tell you right now, I'm like, everything on my body right now, these clothes, is, like, from my brother Roy. And it's just like, okay, you know, um, they're taking me to camp, and it's like, man, I can't, I got to swallow that pride, and God just saying, let me move, you know? And here's the main thing. Okay, here's what I want to do. You wouldn't be here. Oh, first Friday, but I'm saying when you were in that environment and everybody was talking to you, yeah. how many, you'd say how many people came up to you and ended up, you know, how many people, you know, that you would say, hey, a hand, you know, one, two, three, four, like, I mean, uh, about four or five. And after your experience, would you say that impacted also helped you besides seeing everything, but the way they came across and, you know, the, the discussion and the, you know, the back and forth? That was fuel to come to fire and water. That was a lot of the fuel because a I, lot. I was just like, wait a minute, I don't know what do you, who are you, you know. But then when she was just like, bang, bang, I'm like, okay. It was real. It was real. All right, amen. That's the point. You see, keep it real, amen. Give them a hand, amen. Watch this. Um, Chris, I, I, Chris was sharing um, um, uh, a few weeks ago. We were we had a meeting here, and he was, you know, and um, as far as when we show up at these events, yeah, as uh, as as things as things start to grow, oh, what's going on? Um, as as things start to grow, you know what I mean. There, there's a tendency for things to get out of focus. You know what I mean. As things start to get bigger and bigger and bigger, you you start to lose what you were focused on in the first place because things are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and um, that's what's happening down at first Friday. That's what's happening. Here at the church, thing, things are growing and things are, 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 are getting bigger and bigger. So the, and, and there's um, a danger to lose the focus of what it's all about. And you can get caught up in, in all the hype and all, in, in, in all the events and all the stuff that's going on that you forget what you were really doing it for and what the focus is and why we're doing what we're doing in the first place. So I was reading the scripture in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, and it says, And when they had prayed... The place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with, with boldness, but oftentimes we like to just stop at the place was shaken, you know what I mean? Our, the Holy Spirit came and God moved, God fill us up, God give us a word, you know what I mean? And then we don't realize what he's doing that for us for. So we can be down at First Friday or down at a barbecue or at a cleanup and we're forgetting what it's for, and then we can go there just to fellowship, just to hang out, just to have fun, just to do something, you know, and we're forgetting why we're doing this stuff in the first place. We want you to come have fun, but having fun is not the primary purpose. We want you to fellowship, but having fellowship is not the primary purpose. We want you to have a good time, but having good time is not the primary purpose. You know what I mean? And as things start to grow and stuff starts to, starts to happen more and more and more, people can just come for that stuff. If, they're, if we don't readjust the focus and let people know what this is all about. When you come out to First Friday, yeah, talk, hang out, have some fun. But the focus is to reach the people. Yeah, we're going to come together and have church and we want God to come and shake this place. We want the spirit of God to come and move. But we can't just stop right there. We want him to come and fill us and to shake this place so that we can go out and speak the word of God with boldness. We're out here at First Friday where we're setting up, where we're tearing down. There's food, there's stuff like that because we're trying to draw people in to reach them. And if we're having all, all these events but we're still in our little cliques, we're still in our little groups, then we're missing the very purpose and the reason that we're doing this in the first place. You know, where we're drawing people in, you know, just like Eddie said, he came and he stood and he was listening to the music. When we're down there at first party, so many people just get drawn in. They just come. Or when you're up at the barbecue, people are just going to come like, what in the world is going on here? But if, you're just, if you forget the focus of what we're out there to do it for, then they'll come, they'll stand, and they'll walk off. Because we're not being aware and we're not focused on why we're really out there in the first place. We're out there to reach people. You know, the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe in him shall not perish. We're, we're out there to reach people. The Bible says in Romans 15 that we got to go to places where Christ has not been named to reach the people. 
You know, that that that's the focus. And 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 as things get bigger and bigger and bigger, you can you constantly have to readjust that focus. Like this is why we're doing it. The fun is nice. The hamburgers are nice. The music is nice. Being with you guys is nice. But at the end of the day, our focus is to reach that person. If I see somebody standing here and we're fellowship and I'm sorry, but I got to break away from you and I got to go reach this person because this is why we're here. You know, in Acts, when that place was shaken, it wasn't just shaken just to be shaken. Sometimes we can just get caught up to have an experience. I, I just want an experience, and that's it. God comes. He gives you a word in this place. He moves. The Spirit is here. He fills you up. Then you go back out, and you don't do what you're supposed to do with it because you, cause you just want the experience. And a lot of people are going to get drawn to the experience. Oh, it's fun. There's flashing lights. There's stuff going on. But we're out here to reach the people. You got to readjust the focus. When you come out to First Friday, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. A lot of people talking, a lot of people having fun, but don't forget the focus. Amen. We're here to reach the people. We're out there ha ha having a barbecue and a hamburger, and you see somebody you don't even know. Get off from your table and say, and go and have lunch with that person. Can I sit down with you? Because that's the focus. When we're out there cleaning up the neighborhood, it's not to build our name. It's to show these people that God loves them and that he cares about them. That's the focus. And as things get bigger and bigger and God starts to move more and more and more and more and more, the stuff like this is necessary to keep things tight, to keep things structured, to keep everybody on the same page so that when you go out there the first Friday and there's somebody new, new that come, the standard is already set. Like, this is what we're out here to do. I don't know what somebody told you, but we're out here to reach the people. The music is cool. You can raise your hands. You can praise. You can worship. You can dance in the streets. But the minute that somebody gets drawn in, that, that's what it's about right there. This, this is what we came here for. I know you want to talk. I know you want a fellowship. I know you want to hang out somewhere over there, but that's not what we're here for. If we got time for it, that's what we'll do. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to reach the people. It's about the people. And you always got to keep that focus because, like I said, as, as life gets going and starts moving fast pace, getting faster and faster and faster, you, you can have a tendency to drift and, 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 and lose sight of why you started in the first place. Like, why are we out here again? What are we doing again? What's the purpose of this again? You know, it's the people. It's about the people. You got to reach the people, you know. And, and, and people say, well, well I, I just don't know how to evangelize, you know what I mean? I, 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 just don't, I just don't know how to do that. I know I'm supposed to do it, but I don't know how to do it. And I was reading in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let me see it real quick. It says in verse 13 through, through 15, it says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. How much do you believe the gospel? How much do you believe that for God so loved the world? How much do you believe for the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life? How much do you believe it? Because when you believe it, you'll go out and you'll speak it. You can't help but do that. When you eat something good, when you go to a good restaurant, when you see a good movie, you can't help but go and tell somebody, right? You got to go and see this movie. You got to go and eat at this place. This place is phenomenal because you believe in it. How, how is it that we have the greatest news in the world, or so we say, yet we don't go and share it with somebody? Do you believe it? Do you believe that it's the greatest news the world has ever known? Because if you believe it, you can't help but go out and share it and speak it. Do you believe the gospel? Because if you believe it, you'll see somebody... And then you'll go out and you'll go out and you'll speak it because you believe in it. Just like a good restaurant. When I go eat some good Mexican food and I'm with my Hispanic, I'm like, yeah, have, you, have you ever tried this place? You, you, you got to go try this out because I believe in the product. So I'm going to recommend it to you because I believe in it. Do you believe that the gospel saves? And if you see somebody that's lost, you're going to recommend it to them. Man, you need to try this out because I believe in it. Amen. And he goes on to say, Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. Because a lot of people don't go out and share because they're scared. They're scared of rejection. They're scared of, 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 of just being awkward. They're scared of losing a, a relationship or whatever. But he says, listen, I'm going out because it, even if I do die for this thing, 
I know Jesus is going to raise me back up. I, I know Jesus is going to come back and give me absent and body is present with the Lord. So you can go out there and you can step out without any fear at all because Jesus has your back. Jesus has my back. Amen. And I say at first Friday, it's, I mean, if you're looking to grow in your evangelism, you're looking to grow in your witnessing. I say that that's the perfect place to start. It's easy to talk to a complete stranger. You know what I mean? It's easy to go out and just start sharing with somebody and start to build it up and build yourself up and start to learn how to go out there and do it. That's the perfect breeding ground, the perfect on-the-job training for evangelism, to go out there and reach somebody. If you want to really do it, it trains you perfectly because you're running across all kinds of people. You'll get some no's. You'll get some yeses. You'll get some maybes. All, all, all in one, on-the-job on training. And you'll start to learn how to event, and you start to learn how to witness, and you'll start to learn how to deal with people. You know what I mean? Knowing that Jesus has your back. If something happens to you, God is going to raise us up. You know what I mean? So I can't be held back by that. So I got to go out there and do it. And then he says this, for all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. You say, why do we got to go out? Because it abounds to God's glory. Mission exists. We go out and witness because worship is not happening among everybody. God is worthy of our worship. God is worthy of every ounce of praise, of every ounce of breath we got. And there are people out there that are not worshiping the God who made them. There are people out there that, that are not worshiping him who was worthy of all their praise and all their glory. So when we go out and reach him, he gets that glory that he deserves from their life. So that why we go out there and reach him so that thanksgiving and glory can abound unto the God who was worthy of that glory. That's why we go out, because they're not worshiping him. Man, this God is so awesome, so amazing. And he's worthy of your worship. He's worthy of your praise. He came and he died to save you, to get that glory from your life. So that's why I got to go out and I got to go and reach them. But that's the focus. As all this stuff is going on, thing after thing after thing, don't, don't lose the focus. It's about the people. It's always been about the people. will always be about the people. So he's standing around. So, so, so this is what I usually, because cause it's, it's usually people that get drawn in by the music or stuff like that, you know what I mean? So, hey, how's it going? What's up? Enjoying the music out here? Yeah, it's pretty cool. You like that? Hey, would you like to meet the people, you know what I mean, that are afterward? And they're usually like, oh, can I, you know, actually meet them? Right, yeah. actually, that'd be kind of cool. That'd be awesome. Ask them, well, this is what our church does, you know what I mean? This is our church. This is a church event? Yes. Yes, this is a church event. This is what we do. All this. So the people on stage right now, that, that's from the church? From the church. From the church. This is what we do. You know, come out here and love it on people because it's not about being inside the four walls. We know we believe that Jesus came and he died for everybody, not just for people inside the four walls. So that's why we're out here having fun, serving God at the same time. And you should come check us out. You know what I mean? We're right up the street on 20th Street and Roosevelt, if you never heard of it. Card. Card. So, you know, and Jesus loves you. You know what I mean? Is there anything that I can pray for you about? Have you ever given your heart to Jesus? And there, there it is. Got the card. It wasn't over aggressive. It was just, you know, it was, let me just say this. Did you see how you just did that? He used the tool of the music. Hey, you want to meet some of them? Or maybe it's not that. Maybe it's the nachos. Hey, you know, um, you know, would you like me? Are you hungry? I can get you some nachos. You're, you're just kind of, you're built, you're, it's, you're, you're you're communicating, hey, my name is, and is this your first time out here? Starting point. Then the card at a certain point, you know, hey, and yeah, and you know, this is, you know, this is, you know, you know, the church, I'm from the church that's putting this on. And, um, and then, like you said, at a certain point, it's like, yeah, you know, you're more than welcome to come. You know, it's right down, it's not too far from here. Got three services. We got breakfast stuff going on, all sorts of crazy stuff. Amen. Here's the information, you know, and, um, you know, love to have you come. And. And what he just said, would you like me to pray for any? Do you have a prayer request or something that you need prayer? Or, you know, do you see how he went? Or uh, um, um, do you go to church? Or, you know, or have you ever accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior? See, so now it's not like, okay, let me pray for you. Would you like prayer? You see how that was presented? And then so the next step you take is dictated by how they respond. 
Do you see what I'm saying? Um, and sometimes you can share it within that. Your testimony comes out at that moment. And uh, you start to pray depending on the... You see how one door opens up another door. Now, sometimes it's going to be, you're going to go up there. They're not really talking. They're not, hey, you know, by the way, I just want to give you a car. You, you can tell when someone's kind of, yeah, they can tell. But, you know, you could still, you know, at that moment say, hey, um, never seen you here before. And you can tell by their response. So as they're, as they're kind of being closed off, just go, hey, I just want to invite you. You know, this is you know, the church that's putting this on. Uh, my name is so-and-so, but I just want to give you a card if you're ever in the neighborhood. You know, and if they start walking away and they and they're not they're you know, before you give them the car, grab them. Come here. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm talking to you. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know I'm from the church in the hood? Yeah, so so and 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 you get that experience, you know, like I said, sometimes people will be open, sometimes people will be like, Yes, can you pray for me? I'm struggling with, with alcohol, or I got these relationship issues, or yes, I would like, like some prayer, or, or I would like to hear more about the church. How long have you guys been out there? Or sometimes people just be like, no, you know, all right, you know, praise God, God bless you. But the point, whole point is, is, is we're planting those seeds and, and we're at least casting that net. You know what I mean? Because if we don't cast the net, how are we going to catch any fish at all? You know what I mean? So you got to go out there and you got to just throw out the net. You know what I mean? But, 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 but that's the focus. And then when you're out there, you're going to see all kinds of different people standing around, just kind of lingering. And that's your opportunity because that's the reason that we're there, to draw them in. And then we're there to go and reach them, you know? And, and, and that's the best place to do it. That's the best place to get built up in your witnessing and in your evangelizing. Because like I said, you learn it all on the job in real time. You know, you know, rubber meets the road kind, kind of stuff. Well, that approach worked or that approach didn't work. I'll try this the next time. I'll try that next time. You know what I mean? I'll use this. I'll, you know, and you get it all out there. But the whole point is we're out there to reach the people. Don't get caught up in the experience that you miss the people that are drawn in by the experience. You know? And like I said, a lot of stuff is going on. First Friday, barbecues, outreach and events, all that stuff. And all that stuff is good to get some good f fellowship in. You know, that's some of the best times to be speaking with somebody in fellowship and when you're on the mission. But don't let that distract you from the purpose of the mission. You know, okay, now we're here to do what we're supposed to be doing now. No, this isn't time for fellowship and now there's a soul on the line. This is it isn't a time just to be in our little clique, our little group. I see you at church three times a week. You know what I mean? We can hang out. Trust me, we'll have that time. But right now, this is about the people. You know, so so go out there and share. Go, go out there and share. You know, if you truly believe this, if you truly believe that this is the good news, if you truly believe that God saves, still saves, by his grace and his mercy, you know, True, truly believing that Jesus has your back come hell or high water, no matter what happens out there, Jesus is with us. And knowing the reason that we're doing this is so that God can get the glory. It's not for us. It's not so that we can look good. It's not so that we can, you know, you know, have this status. No, it's for God to get the glory. When, we, when, when the soul comes into heaven, the glory goes back to God. And that's what we live our lives for, right, anyways, is to glorify God. And to give God glory, and one of the ways we give God glory is bringing the soul into the kingdom. And if that is a motivation enough to go out and start reaching some people, I, I don't know what is. You know, but, but that's the focus, though. You know, like I said, as things get bigger and bigger, sometimes you have a tendency to lose focus. And the focus, things get out of focus, so you got to continually tighten it up, tighten it up, and realize this is, this is what we're focused on. This is what we're supposed to be doing. And that's all we're out there. Amen. Praise God. Awesome. That's it. Why, so, so we're all little ease. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things because it's we can't. It's him doing it through us. And when we hit the harvest field, that we are prepared and have a spirit of expectancy because we have prayed and have asked the Lord to bring the people that he would want us to be directed to. And to share. When we go into the mission field, be loaded. Do you have your cards, your invitation, your, your fire and water cards? Because I know some of it, you know, and it's not, not in a bad way, but, you know, we're out there, no cards. N you know, there's no ammo. There's no. And um, so make sure you have a handful of cards 
in your pocket right there. There's the card right there. Right there. You look at how many does he how many do you have right there? He's got a bunch of things. Amen. But you see, he's ready. Ready. Anybody else? All right. See, that's what I'm talking about. Dang. I guess I don't have to talk about this anymore. <laughs> boom. 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 <laughs> no wonder we don't have any more. You got them all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 again, we're prayed up, and we go, and when we get there, set up, have fun. But, again, like we said, um, the nachos or whatever is being given out there, the pictures that are being taken, the, whatever's happening on the platform, that's, the, that's the, the method that's being used for the message. The message is, well, some of it's going to come, you know, on the platform there as, as the music or the message is going forth, but the vehicle is you and me. And what, what happens is people are coming, and as the crowds grow, and we have a tendency to be in our groups or kind of looking at the stage at the time, when you start to see the people coming in, it, the, the stage and what's happening on stage is not for us at that moment. We're going fishing at that moment. And, and when you see somebody or a couple or a family or if it's a couple or if it's just one person, um, it's not a matter also like eight people go over there and say, hey, grab somebody and just go over. If it's one person, you know, um, you know. A couple people just kind of go over and, hey, you know, and you introduce yourselves. And just what you saw there, I think, is a perfect example of how to start it off. And then it leads to, um, 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 and, and God will direct you at that moment by the response. And if nothing else, even if it's short, boom, there's the card. Amen. And the seed's been planted. Um, but sometimes the conversation is going to go. You're going to end up praying for somebody. You might be leading somebody to Jesus right there. And then you follow it up by giving them all the information about church and the importance and where we're at. And um, that's excellent. What Chris also said was, I remember working at the airlines. I learned everything. You know, I was in class in, in the airlines and, um, you know, about this and that. But the reality is, and that was necessary, it was good, you know, because you kind of start getting an idea. It gives you a push. But it was the on the job when I went out there. <laughs> videos and everything that was great but and 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 I messed up a few times it, you know sometimes I was like oh you know but then eventually to close my eyes push planes back I'm driving a thing and I'm pushing like a couple hundred people are in there and I'm I'm in control of it amen <laughs> you know and just that came over time and just being out there and getting the experience. At one time, you, I went out with somebody, and they were showing me how they were, it's done over and over and over, right? I mean, that's the way it was. And, 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 and then eventually, little by little, then I took the wheel, and somebody went with me as I took the wheel, and then pretty soon, I was rolling on my own. Amen. 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 So, uh, 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 um, so you see somebody, a couple people, boom, you know? So as, we're, as the people start coming, let's be aware and let's start to get out where the people are at and hang out with the people, amen? And be encouragement, show them around. Like I said, hey, you want some now? I can get some, you know, are you hungry? Are you, you know, start communicating cards and, 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 and let the Spirit of God lead you at that point. The most important thing is we all qualify to do this. You don't need a title, you don't need a degree, we all qualify in Jesus' name, amen? amen. Jolene, why don't you come up and why don't you share as we close, Amen. But the biggest thing is what, like Chris was saying, that was, is excellent. These are platforms that God's given us. We want to have fun. We want to have a big smile when we're doing it, amen. But if we're going just to hang out with other people in the church and that's it, we've missed it. And that's when we become a click in a club and the church shuts down and it becomes dead. But if we're going to impact the city, the way we do is soldiers going out, having fun, fellowshipping. But when the people start coming in and here at the barbecue, People are going to start coming in, and you see somebody that you don't recognize, you get out of your table, or maybe you're standing, and go to that table, or you can even say, hey, have you eaten? Um, you know, I'm here at the church. My name is so-and-so. Would you like me to get you anything? Start a conversation. Start talking to them. Amen? And, um, and, and start connecting. And, and, and if, like, one person and two people, maybe, 
by the end of the day, before the service even starts, five or six people have come, and they're thinking to themselves, what's going on here? I'm getting free food. It's like five or six people are coming up and being so nice, offering me this, um, doing that. That will impact the life because they're going to say, like, wow, everyone's so nice here, and they're not trying to, they're not asking for anything. They're, they're kind of crazy in a good way. But you see what I'm saying? That will impact lives. Jolene, why don't you? Um, well, how I got involved with First Friday is Pastor Ronnie came up to me, and he just said, so what do you do? <laughs> and I was like, nothing. And then he's like, well, you have to have a gift. And I said, um, I talk. That's what I do. So then um, he's like, okay, well, can you introduce people? And I was like, all right, I could do that. So I show up, and he gives me a projector, a uh, sound thing, a DVD player. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I got hustled. And so then, um, so then after that, you know, I was just, we were emceeing. Mandy was there and Pastor Ronnie. And, you know, it was really hard at first, you know, because we were doing everything, you know, three people and, you know, a couple other people that were with us faithfully. And so then Gilbert started doing the sound, praise God. And then Tony started emceeing and we were able to, you know, kind of just grow. And so we just need everybody to help. Um, now I don't even do that, do that stuff. I do the schedule. And so we all have a talent, you know, we just might not know what it is at the moment. And so if you just make yourself available and just come out, we really appreciate it. And we can't grow without you. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Perfect. Amen. And be ready. As you, as you come out there, besides, you know, being ready to, to share with somebody that's never been there, be ready to serve. You know, hey, go up to him. Go up to him. Do you need anything? Um, you know, besides, you know, okay, I see this is ready. To, is there anything else I can do to help? Because, again, the focus. That the number one thing is the focus. Amen. So you might be going in with maybe or helping somewhere, but you might be asked to do something else. And it might not be something that you're, you know, that maybe that wasn't what you're looking to do. But the greatest among them is a servant. And if it's all hands on deck and if it's about the person that needs Jesus, I might not be the one sharing at that point. But this needs to be handled because the one that is sharing over here could be directing them over here using this as a tool. But how can this person use it as a tool if there's no one over here handling the tool? Amen? Amen. And, uh, and, and as we work together, you know, one plants another waters, God brings the increase. Amen? So the main thing of this is this. All these opportunities, it's for the people that are coming in. And let's be aware that we're not caught up while we're talking to one another, while people are sitting there. And you might say, well, somebody already talked to them. Then you go afterwards a little bit. You see what I'm saying? It's, not, it's okay for like five people or six people within an hour to have, you know, do you see what I'm saying? To, to have talked to somebody. When the people start coming, fellowship is over at that moment within the church. All hands on deck, and, you know, we're, we're going to show them the love of God. We're going to show them uh, 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 um, as far as um, um, Jesus in action and that there's a church here that, um, that loves the people and cares about the community. It's not a perfect church, but, uh, 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 but, the, 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 but the, the one that leads the church and is in charge of the church is perfect and and the doors are open no matter where they're at and that we love them amen praise the lord amen remember all of us qualify for this it doesn't matter how long you've been in this thing and maybe some of you in this room maybe have fallen away at one time or another and man you are really feeling 
not good about this and thinking, well, God, man, I, I, maybe he'll for, I get it. God will forgive me, but he entrusted me. He gave me an opportunity back then. I mean, I just, you know, and, and, you know, there's a struggle there. Get back up and take that brokenness where, where the enemy tried to destroy you, give it to God in God's hands, and that brokenness and the things that you went through, you're going to reach a broken person. Amen? You qualify. It's God working through you. Just be available. And, um, and, um, and just be sensitive to the people that are around us when we have these events. Be prayed up. Be excited. Thank the Lord beforehand for what he's about to do. And ask him, Lord, um, direct me and guide me to the people that you would want me to speak to. Please. Well, everything that's, that you've been saying about First Friday also applies to our breakfast ministry here. Please, go ahead. And uh, instead of just being with all our buddies Excellent. in the breakfast ministry, uh, what I look around, I look around people I've never seen before, maybe brand new, go up and make friends with them. And I've led several people to the Lord right at the breakfast ministry doing that. In fact, I led somebody to the Lord today in the breakfast ministry yeah. just doing that. Amen. Thank you. Awesome. These are all platforms. Have some fun, fellowship. Absolutely. But boom. You see somebody out there that's never been, or you see it for the first time. Maybe they've been here, but you've never seen them here. Go up to them. Start to talk to them. Minister to them. Um, ask them, do you have a seat in the church yet? You know, once you realize it's the first time here. You know what? Well, when you finish, you know, eating, um, I'll take you to inside and we'll get, I'll, I'll get you some seats. You know, so the wall, by the time they get in here, man, the wall is down. The heart is open so they can receive from all the craziness that happens in here. Amen. <laughs> in a good way. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. So, amen. amen. Good. Amen. Ready to go. So when's the next one? Next week. May 6th at 7 p.m. 4th Street in Garfield. On the corner. In the field. <laughs> and it's the night before the barbecue. So watch this. What a great way to invite people or put something in their hand while you're witnessing or, you know, connecting with them. And we have a free barbecue tomorrow night. Doesn't get any more easier. Free. Someone here is free. No gimmicks, no catches. That's what I'm saying. Have fun while you're talking to people, amen, and keep it real because people are tired of what's happened in the past and the, 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 uh, the deception of, like, some of these events, and you get there, and it's not what they said. Keep it real and, let it, and just be yourselves, too. Don't try to be like the how somebody out don't try to be like right be yourselves and the way god created you and remember within it opportunities are going to be given and you have a testimony share your experience share where you were and what god did just like mario and renee what did they do they, they've, they've they've been to the the homeless ministry or resurrection ministry saturday night they shared here and this morning again and and and, and it's only what it's been a week and a half or so So, so you can say, oh, my God, you know, I'm, you know, I was just doing this, and I don't know, I'm still not, I don't got that much scripture. And they have an experience of what God's done in their lives, and they're giving glory. And, yeah, I was on this, and I was on that, and now it's 10 days or 11 days later, and it was the Lord that did it. So when someone's struggling and they hear that, you're pointing them to the answer. Amen. Praise the Lord. And shout, I do qualify. And I am a little E. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Where's the angel? Come here, angel. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You're going to close in prayer. Okay? You're going to pray? You're going to say, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everybody. Bless them, protect them, and bless their week. Amen. Something like that. Are you sure? Are you ready? Okay, come here. And then you finish uh, by saying, in Jesus' name. Okay. Okay. Lord, thank you for everybody here in our church today. Lord, thank you for everybody here in church today. Um, 
Bless them. Bless them all. Bless them all. Protect them as they go home. Protect them as they go home and let them have a good week. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. All hands on deck in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. And remember, load up on the car.